Okay, so for today's lesson, we're going to be looking at constant rate of change. So this is our new unit. And then the purpose of this, this activity is I want to make sure that you have an understanding of proportions and tables that we're using distance, weight, and time. So today's lesson is going to help you with building that relationship between the proportional relationship and we're going to introduce a new formula called F, which is, and I'll write this up here, D equals, which is distance, equals weight times 10. So I'm going to write that up. Distance equals weight times time. <laughs> so, it's kind of confusing, but, um, but it's um, whatever the weight is times the amount of time that it has. And we're going to go through two examples today, so I want you to follow through um, and write as we go so that you will have a better understanding of what our assignment will be for tomorrow. Um, so, looking at this first one, it reads, have you ever had a honeybee chase after you? Honeybees are fast, topping speeds of up to 15 miles per hour. So how far can a honeybee travel during the school day from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m.? So let's take a look. We're going to answer the questions and compare the chart. I know that in here, I'm going to go ahead and underline the important facts. It says that a honeybee can travel up to 15 miles per hour, right? So for zero times, we're looking at our process. Remember, this is everything that happens. It takes you back to fifth grade, right? Or zero. Um, so how do we get to the distance? In zero time, how does the honeybee travels how many miles? There you go, it's going to travel zero. So I'm looking at this part where to find that, I know that at the time of zero, so zero times, remember the miles that it's traveling at 15, that's going to equal to zero. So there's my first process. What do you think is going to happen on the second one? Very good. So I'm going to take my time, so it's for one hour, and I'm going to multiply that by its speed at 15 miles per hour. So in one hour, the honeybee will travel 15 miles. Okay, so go ahead and pause the computer and finish out the rest. So this is what you should have done. So knowing that for two hours times 15 miles per hour will equal 30. For three hours, three times 15 equals the travel distance of 45 miles. For seven hours, seven times 15 miles per hour, the travel distance of 105 miles. So Looking at what we talked about earlier, the distance equals weight times, I mean, distance equals weight times time, then here the time would be t. So t equals, and it should be, I was supposed to put multiplication. So t is times. 15, which equals D, the distance. So we take a look at the time, we multiply it by how fast it goes per mile, and that's going to get us our total distance. So, look at question 2. How far does a bee travel in zero hours? Go ahead and pause the computer and fill in the blanks. So for number two, you should have written down how far does a bee travel in zero hours? Well, it's zero miles. In one hour, we can see on our chart 
why it will be 15 miles. And at 3 hours, I'm looking at the 3 hours here, it's 45 miles. Question 3. How far does a bee travel in 5 hours? So we're going to pause. And where do you think it would be? Okay, so if you get 75, you're absolutely correct. My explanation is that each hour a bee can travel 15 miles. I multiply 15 by 5 to get 75. To so make sure that yours is something similar, you could have done just uh, the hours of 5 and hours times 15 will equal 75. Question 4. How does the distance change with every hour? What do you mean notice? Yeah, so if you say that it's each hour is 15 more miles, you're absolutely right. So each hour is 15 more miles. And that's how the distance was changing every 15 miles, right? Question 5. What is the relationship between time and distance? Okay, so what do we think it is? Alright, very good. So time is being multiplied by 15 to get distance. Very good. So you can say something to that nature. Um, you don't have to write exactly the same thing down. But we know that we are multiplying it by 15 to find the distance. We can see that here, how far did it go, which is our distance. And what we did is we multiplied that for every hour that it traveled. So number six, what does 15 represent in the problem? Okay, so 15 represents how many miles a bee travels each hour. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We need to graph this relationship, so be sure to label your axis. So remember when we have vocabulary, we have, this is my y, I mean my x-axis, I need to write x, and let me change the color, this is color, and this is going to be my y-axis. And then we're going to label so on my x-axis, remember that I have two columns. So looking up here, I have time and distance. So what do you think is going to be at this for my x-axis? Very good. I'm going to probably put time there. And then this one right here, I'm going to have distance. I'm going to just turn that on completely upside down. There we go. So it's distance. What happens in the graph every hour? So when you are plotting, what you want to make sure that you do is take this. We have 0, 0, then 1, 15. I'm going to type out my order pairs here. And I start off with, in my parentheses, my first order pair is... 0, 0. The second order is 1, 15. The second order pair is 2, 30. The third, yeah, no, 3 and 7. Then we have, in parentheses, 3, um, what was it, 45? And my last one was 7, comma, and we said that it was, yes, 105. I need to double check my numbers.
Just going to show my distance. Um, so I can actually, I'm going to remember my, the scale of, let's say here it's one, two, three, four, and I'm going to place five right here. And actually, I should change my color. That's exactly what I'm going to do, just change this color. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to place my five here. And that's six, seven, eight, and there's my ten here. So I don't have to just do one, two, three, four, and well, that's a lot of writing. And one, two, three, four, five, and my fifteen will go here. Distance. I'm going to have a scale of 30. I'm changing my skip count by 30 on here. And the reason is, is because I'm looking at my line at 15, 30, 45. So it'll be easier to plot my um, points, my order pairs. So it's 10, 20, so starting the art part of origin, I'm just going to have 10, so I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so I have enough, and we'll kind of go off, so let's do 10, 20, 30, I'll do 30 here, this is a little too thick. Zero. Well, next it says I'm going to be 1 to 15, so it's 1. And if I'm going to skip counting my tens, the 5 is going to be, so 10, and right in the middle, right? So I'm going to place my first dot there. Can scale it the way you feel it's right. I'm just doing this because it's the way I see it's been skipped up. So next I have two. So I'm going to start with my point of origin, move to the right, one, two, and I'm moving up to my three, which I said it was right here. Put my next dot. The next is three, which is here, and I'm moving up to 45. If this was 30, that's 40, and right in the middle is 45. And the next is 7, and I guess I could have put the 100, right? So it's 5, there's 5, 6, 7, and I'm going to move on up. This is 90, that's 100, and 105 will be right here in this middle. And so now I'm going to connect my dots. So let me come over here to my line segment. I'm 
it's just about that you're now able to place that on here. And what are you noticing about what's happening between time and distance? Right? It's increasing. So looking at what happens in the graph in the hour, we can say that the graph rises by 15 miles for each hour. Okay. Is the change in the graph constant or not constant? Okay, so is it consistent or is it not consistent? It is constant because for each hour the bee travels, it goes 15 miles. So it is in increments of 15 miles. So we say that it is constant because for each hour the bee travels Those 15 miles. I kind of like the way that's phrased, but I'm going to stick with it. So it was constant because for each hour the bee travels, it goes 15 miles. All right, in the equation, d equals 15t, and that's what we're going to have. So we're looking at this one right here. What does t represent? Very good. Remember, we said that t was time. What does the D represent? Excellent. D for distance. Good job. And where, oops, or what does the 15 represent in our equation? Right, it's going to be time again because it's the, the name of um, hours it travels. It's per hour, right? It's the number of miles it travels per hour. All right, what are the variables in the equation? All right, so the variables are the letters that we're looking at. So when you put it here, variables means letters. So what are the letters that we're using in here? D and T. And what is the constant rate of change? Remember, what is it? The constant, what is consistent? The constant rate of change is 15 miles per hour. And what does the order pair of 0 or 10 on 150 represent in the problem? So we move it up to 10. It means that at 10 hours, the B has traveled 150 miles. So let's take a look at this next one. So make sure that you pause the video and catch up on this part and once you're ready, move to the next. So you're going to follow the same concept here. Sharks. Yikes! A shark can swim at speeds of 44 miles per hour. How long will it take a shark to swim at top speeds to travel across the Atlantic Ocean, which has a breadth of 1,000 miles? Alright, so I want you to go ahead, using that same concept we did before with the honeybees, use this one with sharks. Now, look at the information we have. It swims. The speed is 44 miles per hour. So that's important information. And remember, you're going to have the process was the time, which is 0 times its speed, which is 44 miles an hour. So the distance here would be, yes. 
zero, right? All right, so go ahead and finish filling out the rest of it. Pause the video and fill it out. Okay, so yours should look like this, not as zigzaggy as mine is, but here you have one for every hour, it can be 44 miles per hour, so the distance is 44. Two hours, he traveled 88. Three hours, 132. Ten hours, 440. Twenty hours, 880 miles. Twenty-two um, hours, he traveled 968 miles. But twenty-three hours, he traveled 1,012 miles. And so, looking at time, T times 44 miles per hour will equal the distance. So how far does a shark travel at zero hours? Go ahead and fill out the questions one through six on your own and then come back to the video to check your answers. Pause it. Don't forget to pause me. So here's what we have for two. A shark travels at zero hours, zero, zero miles. In one hour, 44 miles, and you can see this on my chart right here, in 2 hours, 88 miles. How far does a shark travel in 15 hours? Okay, well, I just multiply 15 times 44, and I've got 660 miles. And you put my zero there. How does a shark change with every hour? Each hour is 44 more miles. Five, what is the relationship between distance and, or time and distance? Time is being multiplied by 44 to get the distance. And what does the 44 represent in carbon? 44 represents how far a shark travels each hour. Now I want you to do the same thing that we did with the honeybee, and I want you to graph that relationship. And Answer the questions and then you can come back to check your work. And then your exit ticket is a common formula that mathematicians use, especially those calculating speed, is D equals RT. So explain the connection you see between the formula, the tables process column, and the graph. How are the table and graph related to D equals RT? So that's something to think about. As you are, excuse me, working out this last table. Okay, so looking at what I did, I'm going to just kind um, of skip skipping the tens. I actually two is to get to ten and number twenty, and then over here I skipped it by one. I could have made the square a lot larger, but I didn't, and I kind of just squeezed in my data points. Um, remember that the first one is used as x and the second one is y. In this case, we're going to say that the first one is t for the time, because it's represented by the x variable. And d is going to be the distance, because that's what I'm going to be plotting on the, I mean, not variable, but x axis. And that's what I'm plotting on the y axis. So what happens in the graph every hour? The graph is going to be 44 miles for each hour. Is the distance, is the change in the graph constant or not constant? It is constant because for each hour, the, oops, not the shark, sure, but the shark travels, it goes uh, 44 miles. So it travels 44 miles. Okay. In the equation d equals 44t, what does t represent? Time. What does d represent? The distance. So what does 44 represent? The number of miles in one hour. What are the variables in the equation d equals 44t? Well, remember that variables are the letters. So we have d and t. What is the constant rate of change? 44 miles per hour. What does the oil power of 151 represent? And on the hours, the, the short will travel 451 miles. In 14, how long will it take a short to swim at top speed to travel across the Atlantic Ocean? Between 22 and 23 hours of moving at top speed. 
Now this part right here, you're going to paste into your math journal. You're going into your math journal. So a common formula that mathematicians use, especially those calculating speed, which is d equals rt, which is root times time. It's one of the connections. So in the column, the process column shows multiplying the speed or the rate of the time in order to get the distance. So looking over here, in the process column, we multiplied the time is multiplied by the distance, I mean the miles per hour, to get the distance, the total miles that we traveled. Over here, this is the same as the formula, d equals r multiplied by time. In the graph, the points of the order pair, t and d, which is the same as x and y, but in this case, we're using it to represent time and distance. Now the speed or rate in the graph, and the graph rises by the rate for each hour. And so that's what we've noticed up here. For every hour, it was increasing um, quite rapidly, right? Um, and so we would have been off the grid if I would have done this by maybe um, spending a half up 750 to 1200. Um, we would have been able to plot that and then I would have had it different. But it would have looked the same, but I would just have all my points very small and very hard to get to. Alright, make sure that this gets going into your math journal. Hold all of these papers, put it in your math journal, fill that up, make a pocket of maybe, um, and then we will be continuing on this lesson for Wednesday. Have a great day.